This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial, this time a little bit different. This time we're going to be taking a look at an advanced technique and I want to do this throughout the course of our Media Composer 101 tutorials. I not only want to take a look at basic fundamentals inside a Media Composer, but I also want to make these tutorials for intermediate to advanced users as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to interrupt our normal lesson flow with a few advanced tutorials. In this case, this one comes from an email that I received from a viewer. It's from John and John says, Hi Kevin, I've enjoyed watching your tutorials very much. I've wanted to pan and scan photos for a long time, so I'm tackling After Effects since I have it and moving pictures does not do 3D. But there's little info except for Wolf Crow on how to do round trip from Avid to After Effects. Maybe you could do one of these tutorials, please. So I get that I make an AAF for After Effects, but how do I go from After Effects to Avid? Do I make a quick time with Avid Codec? I did that and tried to import it without success. Then I AMA linked to it and then I consolidated it. Is that the right procedure? Short introduction, long question. Thanks, Kevin. Well, John, we're going to answer your question in this tutorial. I'm going to show you how simple it is to take your sequence from Media Composer to After Effects and then I'm going to show you the proper procedure to export that timeline to get it back to Media Composer in no time flat. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And I have a bin already set to go. And one thing I do want to point out about the clips that I have in here, and this was actually a bit of a discussion that was going on on the Avid Editors of Facebook Facebook page, as to whether this technique would work using fast imported ProRes files. You'll see that these video files that I have here are actually ProRes files inside a Media Composer. You can see that right here, the ProRes HQ. So I wanted to do this technique to show that this works whether you've actually imported this media and converted it to actual Avid DNX media, or whether you're using ProRes files, which are supported for import inside of Media Composer. So you can see all the clips that I have here are ProRes files, and the timeline that I have here, let's just move my bin out of the way, the timeline that I have here is made up of those clips. Just a very basic timeline. A couple guys playing basketball with a slam dunk there, very nice. Okay, I and mean, we want to do some compositing work to these three shots. Now, in most cases, people say, well, Kev, I would just take that clip, I would export it, I'd go into After Effects, and I'd just break it up into the individual clips. Well, you know what? When you're dealing with a clip that's five seconds long and it's only got three edits in it, sure, no problem. What if you're dealing with an edit that's two minutes long and has 87 edits in it? You don't want to get in and be adding in all these edits, trying to figure out where all these edit points happen inside of After Effects. You want to simply be able to have the AAF, much like we talked about in the email, the AAF tell After Effects where all these edits are going to happen and actually populate with all the media from your Avid Media Files folder wherever you happen to have your media saved to. So how do we go about doing this? Well, it's actually very easy. What we're going to do is we're simply going to right click on our sequence and I'm going to come down and I'm going to say export. Now you'll see inside the export settings I have a ton of export settings, but what we need to do is we need to create a new one. So what we're going to do is simply come into options and like I said, we're going to be using an AAF right here. So what we're going to do, you'll see up here at the top, we can use marks, basically meaning in and out points, and use the enabled tracks. What I do want to make sure that I do turn on here is the AAF edit protocol. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come down, and because I only have video in my timeline, I'm only going to export video. If you have audio and you want to send that over as a reference, by all means, feel free to include audio as well. But what I'm going to do is simply include all video data. Now, I don't want to get in and copy any media, consolidate it, or mix it down. I just want to link to it. That's all I want to do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this new preset. Let's call it Pro Import AE. Why not? We'll keep this simple. Okay. I'm simply going to say OK. And what I'm going to do now is just say Save. And I'm going to cancel this because I want to show you now once I've saved that preset, if I come into my settings here, you can actually see it located right here Pro Import AE. So let's now take this sequence. I'm going to right click. We're going to say Export. And I'm going to send it to the desktop. We'll just create a new folder. We're going to call this, let's just call it the same thing. We'll call this export, we'll call, actually call this export 4AE. OK, 
Okay, and I'm simply going to save it there. Okay, you'll see if I hide out a media composer, I go to my export for AE uh, folder, I only have one clip in there. You'll see it's only 422 kilobytes big, so it's tiny. But this little tiny AAF is what's going to be the bridge that's going to get us from Media Composer to After Effects. So let me show you what we need to do next. Okay, next step, let's command and tab into Adobe's After Effects CC 2014. Again, we're staying current, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. Now to import this AAF slightly different from how you would normally import a file into After Effects, instead of simply saying file import file, we actually want to come down a couple to Pro Import After Effects. Now once we do, you're going to see that we have a whole bunch of different uh, settings down here that we're going to get to in just a second. But for right now, what I'm going to do is just navigate into that folder. This is the clip we're going to import and I could simply say open, but let's take a look at some of the settings that we have in here first. First and foremost, most important, field separation. If we're talking about NTSC high definition video, if we're talking about 1080i, your footage is going to be separated as upper field first. If we're dealing with NTSC standard definition footage, you will be dealing with lower field first. But what's important to keep in mind, if I come back to uh, Media Composer here, you'll see that the footage that I'm working with here, if I actually come into my columns here, we come down to our frames per second. Let's just get back out of After Effects here. There we go. Let's come down to frames per second. You'll see that what we're dealing with is 2398 frames per second. So of course our field separation will be none because we are dealing with a progressive format. Now you'll see for FCP media, we have some options for Avid media. We can connect After Effects directly to Avid media files or what I personally like to do is to create QuickTime reference movies to reference that Avid Media. Now I'm going to show you what happens when you do that in just a second. Now you'll see that we can. what we can also do is we can add layers for rendered Avid Media. We can also search for original imported graphics files if we want to. If we need to get in and search for media, we can actually set a search parameter, a search volume right here. But most importantly, what you might want to do is get in and set up some comps and layer parameters here. You'll see that audio, we can place it in a sub comp. We can add it normally, or we can actually enable it on video layers. What we can also do, if we wanted to change this, let's say we are doing something specifically for the web, instead of the AAF determining how big my comp is going to be, I could actually override that to be whatever preset I might want in here. But of course, we don't want to do that. We can also get in and adjust layer organization, have our layers step up in the composition. We can have them step down. We can keep them vertically adjacent. We can pre-compify clips based on tracks and colorize layers using labels if we wanted to. But what we're going to do is we're not going to actually do any of that. What we need to do, like I said, is make sure that our field separation is set to none. We're going to create QuickTime reference movies to Avid Media Files. And then all we're going to do is simply say open. Now because again, this clip is only five seconds long, it's going to be very quick to import. But you'll see that once it's done, if I double click, I now have an After Effects composition laid out exactly as I have my Media Composer composition inside of Adobe's After Effects. Now you remember that setting that I had about creating QuickTime reference files. So what exactly happened when I did that? Well, you'll see that if I come into the folder that I created called Export for AE, a new folder has been created that has three clips in it. And what they actually are, are QuickTime reference files. And you'll see that because I'm using a newer version of QuickTime here, if I right click and say open with QuickTime player, you'll see these QuickTime reference files do reference the original media on my hard drive. Very cool, and very handy. What's also important to keep in mind, if I actually command tab back into Adobe's After Effects, is that we actually have handles here. You'll see that I can actually adjust this shot as much as I have handles for based on how much of this footage is inside of Media Composer. Very cool. So I can get in and tweak things however I want. Okay, so we're just going to say hypothetically I've gone through, I've created all kinds of crazy composites, and now we're ready to export this to bring it back into the Avid. Okay, so what is the process for that? Well, what I'll probably do here just for kicks is I'm just gonna call this, I'll rename this timeline here, this composition, we'll just call this final in big bold letters, okay? What we're gonna do is navigate to the render queue. I'm simply gonna take that composition, drag it right down here like such. Now things are broken up in After Effects into two categories. We have our render settings and we have our output module. Let's talk about render settings first. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to our render settings. I'm simply gonna click on it here. And the only thing that we really need to get in here and tweak from what has already been set as a preset 
is right down here, depending on our footage. You'll remember I talked about field dominance, upper field for uh, high definition 1080i in NTSC, or for standard definition NTSC, we'll be dealing with lower field. If you happen to be working in one of those two formats, you're going to want to switch your field render to whichever uh, field render you're going to need based on HD or SD. Again, we're talking about NTSC, uh, North American Television Standard. Okay, But for us, because we're working in progressive, we of course want to leave the field render as off. So I can actually leave everything exactly the way that it is. I'm simply going to say OK. Now the next one is a big one, the output module. Now for me, depending on my workflow, you'll see right now it's set up to be a QuickTime. What most people like to do is they say, I'm going to render this out as an animation file. You know, We're going to get the best possible quality. But you don't actually need to do that. What we want to do in most cases is render this out. And I'm going to show you how we can do this with the Avid codec. You could, of course, render it out as a ProRes file if you wanted to, if you happen to be on a Mac. But I'm going to show you how we do this as an Avid codec file. So whether you're on Windows or on Mac, it's going to work exactly the same. Now, of course, because I don't have any audio, I'm simply going to switch the audio off. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch our format options here, of course, from animation to use the Avid DNX HD codec that's located right here. Here. Now, in most cases, people select that, they simply say OK, and they go off on their merry way, and then they wonder why they've run into problems later on. Well, that's because we didn't actually tell After Effects anything about the Avid codec that we want to use. You'll see the first option we have is what is the color levels we want to use. Do we want to use 709 or RGB? I'm going to leave it as 709. Now, the great thing is with the Avid codec, which is a little bit different from many other codecs out there, we actually have access to alpha channels. We can actually render out elements with Mac keys using the Avid codec from After Effects to import with an alpha channel into Media Composer. Now because I'm not using an alpha channel, I'm just going to leave that set to none. But what's important here is the last part, the resolution. Now depending on what resolution I'm using inside a Media Composer is going to dictate what resolution I use here. But of course it's simplified a little bit. If you're using 1080i North American, right here 5994, you're going to want to choose one of these three resolutions, DNX 145, 228 bit, or 22010 bit. Now, me, I'm working in 23976 1080p, so here are my options down here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to be using DNX 36 because that's really for offline. What I want to use is really 115 or 175. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this to be DNX HD 175. I'm simply going to say OK. Now, if this happens to be sort of the workflow that I'm always going to be using, what I can do once I simply say OK and OK is right down here at the output module, I can drop down the menu, make a template out of this, and maybe I'll just call this DNX HD 175. So this way, I always have it. If I wanted to, I could always actually have it as a movie default, so it will always appear when I drag a clip down there. What I'm going to do is simply say OK, and I'm just going to render this back to the folder on the desktop here. I'm simply going to say go, and depending on obviously how fast your computer is, you know, how many effects you have on here, literally in a matter of seconds, what you're going to have inside of your export for AE folder, I'm just going to right click, we'll open this with QuickTime Player, as you'll see, if I take a look at my movie inspector, what we now have is a QuickTime file with the Avid DNX codec 1920 by 1080 at 2398 frames per second. What I can actually do now is simply come back into Media Composer, we can come back to our bin, I'm going to right click, I'm going to import, I'm going to come right back to my folder, I'm going to select my Pro Import AE. What I'm going to do here is simply come into my options, we're going to import as 601709, it's size for the current format. I'm going to say OK, we want to make sure this is going to the Mac drive, there we go. I'm going to say open, you'll see that it's going to say, well hold on a second. Right now the resolution in the media creation settings, the media creation settings being right down here, is set to bring everything in, you'll see if I come through here, at DNX 115 HD. But what the import was telling me, if I come back here and I right click and say import, again, we're going to come right back to that clip, it's going to say, well, hold on a second. I know the resolution of this file is DNX 175, so what would you like to do? What I always do here is I don't want to change the video resolution and recompress this file. I'm going to leave it the way it is, and if I happen to be importing multiple files the same way, I would apply it to all the files in the current import, simply say go, and literally in a matter of seconds, I now have the finished clip back inside a Media Composer ready to go in whatever project I happen to be working on. So I hope this tutorial has shown you how round tripping from Media Composer to Adobe's After Effects and back again is really very simple. And now that you've seen how it's done, 
I guarantee you're going to be using it all the time. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button, and don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.